okay? We're here so that what? Reality can be reset. So we get, that's why the word says, forget not to assemble. Why? So that reality can be reset. Now, um, I got downloaded yesterday, so I'm going to try and put it into words. We are light carriers. Amen? So when we come together, what happens is a, a fresh spark of light comes. There's a fresh light again. And in that fresh light, we get reset. That's why it's important about associations and people we hang with and so forth. That's why the Bible says when two or more are gathered together, Jesus is in the midst. What's he doing? He's resetting our reality. And, and in this resetting of our reality, it's so that things are, the power, that the deception is exposed, so light is exposing darkness and driving out darkness so that the true light of Christ, the truth of all things, can be revealed to us and that we can express these things. So, um, when we come together, there is a fresh spark of light. And in that fresh spark of light, we get reset again. We see better, we hear better, we're refreshed. And it depends on us, though, in that area, because how deep do you want to go? How deep will that, you allow the light to penetrate you? And take you to a deeper arena of God Almighty into the light. See, remember the tabernacle is actually three chambers of light. Amen. The greatest, the brightest light is in the third chamber. How deep do you want to go? How deep are you willing to go? And this is where you got to ask yourself. So there's got to be a reality check for each and every one of us. A self-examination of what reality we're really in. Now, there are three realities to us. You have a past, a present, and a future reality. <laughs> They're all connected by three major things. Time. memory, and emotion. Time, memory, and emotion. So we know that there is a battle over reality. And we've talked about some of this before. But right now it's a time for reality check. In other words, what reality are you living in right now? Are you still living in the past reality? Are you living in just the present reality? Or are you living in the future reality? See, now again, if we're living from the future, we're living from the brightest light. And that's the promises of God. And that's why Jesus came. He came to bring us the true reality because he knew that everything was in deception. Amen? Remember Satan was removed from the throne room of God, from his presence, and he came to deceive, amen, the whole world, and he still does it. I mean, look at what's the deception that's going on over the world right now. I mean, if people were truly living in the right reality, they would see the reality of darkness. They would see the evil. They would see the corruption. They would see the deception. Look what drugs and alcohol does to an individual. It puts them in a, another reality. Why? Because it alters their state of being, their mind. So the word says, as a man thinks, so he is. So that's what the enemy tries to do. That's why there are also voices from multiple realities to try and deceive us or suck us out of the true reality. Amen? Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. So in this battle over, uh, so we're battling to remove darkness, the reality of deception, and bring truth, which is the reality of light, and everything we do. I mean, there's so many things that we have no conception of. 
that's going on. Now, what hinders us, you got to remember something, is the present reality knowledge. It hinders people because they can't get beyond that knowledge. They're so caught up in their education, what they know. They can't let go and go deeper. Why? Because the Bible says that the knowledge of this world and the wisdom of this world is what? Demonic. Not that we don't see. We're to use that to advance God's kingdom here in this realm because it is the knowledge of this realm. But there's another knowledge that comes from God. There's another understanding. There's a discernment that comes from God Almighty that keeps me and you in the light and exposes all the deception of darkness. So there are things in the world that we're to take dominion over and use for God's glory and not allow them to use us to move us out or prevent us from going deeper. I know many people that have worked hard to get an education, become doctors and nurses and, and professionals. They've worked very hard. And they've earned their certificates. But that certificate don't get you in heaven. Amen? They've earned degrees and everything. And, but again, we can't allow that. It shouldn't allow, that should not be priority. The priority is to take dominion over the, those things, to use it against darkness. I remember one day the Lord shared with me, he said, you know, use what darkness is trying to get against you, against them. I said, wow. And I began to realize about the wisdom. He said, use the wisdom that I've given you to can take dominion over the wisdom of the world. Don't let it use you or it'll move you out of position. So, so many people can't get beyond their, the, the, their certificates and their education, their intellect. Because their intellect has been grown so much by the, the, this reality here that we're in. Now, this reality is real, but it's still false. So, a reality can be real, but it's still a lie. And every one of us has had independent realities. Thinking we were doing the right things, but being deceived. Amen? Every one of us here has done something or was going to do something or agreed with something that they would bet their life on it and found out it was wrong. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> because the voice of those realities that promote deception drew us out of the true reality or allowed the false reality to come in and begin to darken the light. Is everybody okay? All right. First John chapter 3 and verse 7. Little children, let no one what? Deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is what? Of the devil. Hello. What's the devil? Is the promoter of what? The false reality. Amen. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil or the false reality or lies of deception. So you and I were born in a, in a reality that is real, but it's controlled by darkness. Amen? Whoever has been born of God does not sin, doesn't associate with that reality of darkness if you're really truly born again. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Now, it's his brother from the same reality. Amen? From the reality of light. For this is the message that you've heard from the beginning that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. Why? Because the world is another reality. It doesn't mean it's not real. Amen? 
It's just a, a, a place that's controlled by deceptions and lies. We know that we have passed from death to life. Why? Because this reality is nothing but a place of death. Because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brethren abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So we have in me and you, that's what the Bible talks about, the kingdom of God being within us. We have the true reality in us. Now we're waiting for the rest of it to come with redeemed bodies, glorified bodies, so that we may walk fully in that reality. But we can still walk in, and the Spirit allows you to walk in the true reality of light. Because it's an inward walk, not an outward walk. Does everybody get it? Hallelujah. Deception is the weapon of darkness to control humanity into their reality. Until death do them part. <laughs> Amen. Preventing the light of the truth to enter their soul. What happens? They become slaves of good and evil. I'm going to say that again. They become slaves of good and evil. Why? Because many of them believe that the things they're doing is good. But it's actually good and evil. Not able to reach the light of righteousness. Jesus came to destroy the false reality of what we call the matrix. Resetting time, memory, and emotion to align each and every individual that is a follower of hers with the kingdom of light in Christ Jesus. Do you want me to repeat that? <laughs> Deception is the weapon of darkness to control humanity. It brings them into their reality. <laughs> like I said, until death do them part. <laughs> it's like caging a bunch of individuals and turning the lights off until they die. But they feed them all of this, whatever they want. They feed them information, they feed them this, they give them a, all, all the comforts of living and all kinds of things, but they're still in darkness. Because they can't really see. They give them education. They give them all of these things, but they're still in darkness. Not willing to come through thoroughly through the light and escape. They're not able to, they, the only thing that they do is they, uh, in this deception, their enemy is preventing the light of the truth to enter their soul. They become slaves of good and evil. Not able to reach the light of righteousness. So they're always justifying themselves on how, how good they are. I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I'm a good person. When people begin to promote themselves of being good, you know that they're in another reality. Amen. Because there's only one good. <laughs> and it sure ain't us. Hallelujah. Again, Jesus came to destroy the matrix with a false reality. What's he doing? He, you can see it all over the world now. He's resetting time. He's resetting memory. And he's resetting emotion to align with the kingdom of his, of his light. Why? Because he's resetting our reality. He's setting our, we're getting ready to go into a whole other era. And he wants his children to be prepared in this era so that they make it and reach that era of change. I've done a teaching already about reality shift. And it's about to, it's about, we're in it right now. Things are shifting very rapidly. And it will increase more and more and more. John chapter 3 and verse 1. This is so powerful. There was a man uh, of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night because he didn't want anybody to know. Again, I always share about he, if he got caught, he'd get thrown out of the uh, Sanhedrin club. Couldn't go and work out no more, take sauna, you know, stuff like that. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. 
For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In other words, what was he saying? Man, you need, you need to get born out of, you need to be born again and come out of this reality that you're in, this religious stuff that you're doing. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born, born when he's old? Jesus, and can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus laughed. No, he didn't. <laughs> Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. So what was he talking about? Man, you need to get born again to escape this reality that you're living. Do not marvel that I said you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from. And where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I had told you earthly things, here we go, and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who has come down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in, in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Wow. Born again into the true reality of life. Now, that is also known as a state of being. And again, Hosea 4, 6, what does it say? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And that's godly knowledge, heavenly knowledge, revelation knowledge. Amen? They're destroyed. Why? Because they're still living in this reality of deception. You know, living in darkness means that you're blinded. But you still see and live and have your being in it. People still go to work, have families and so forth and become successful, all kinds of things. But that doesn't mean that they're free. They're still slaves of good and evil. Amen. Destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen. They're captive. They are taken captive in the reality of deception. Proverbs 23, 6. Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his what? Delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Ooh, so is he. Eat and drink, he says, but his heart is not with you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Again, as a man thinks, so he is. Or as a man thinks, so he becomes. Everyone carries all three realities within them. Influenced by knowledge, influenced by perception, and desire. Three realities that are influenced by, which is the past, present, and future reality. So those realities are influenced to you on an everyday basis by knowledge, by your perception of things, which is also your interpretation of things. Amen? And by desires. Because as a person desires something, they're going to try and bring it into that reality. But sometimes that desire will bring that person out of the true reality of life. Look at him. Like, well, what do you think backsliding is? When a person falls back into the world, they've fallen back into the matrix or the reality, but it's real to them. The pain is real. The deception is real. The evil is real. Death is real. Everything is real. War is real. Why do you think they try to create war? They're trying to what? Alter reality. All, that's what the whole powers of darkness do. They're always trying to alter reality in our life, no matter what. Television. Tell a what? Vision. And let's just program it. Yeah, turn to this program and you get programmed. Now they got phones. They can do it right over the phone. 
music. What does that do? It alters a person's reality. How many people have gone out and murdered people because of a movie they watched or music they heard? Brought them right out of a, the reality of light. Fornication, all of these things. Rebellion, disobedience, all of these things. are That's just the desires of the enemy trying to draw us out of that true reality. Then what does he try to do? He tries to bring sickness and disease on us to draw us out. Instead of running to the throne, they run to the phone. People are dependent more on doctors and medication than they're on the healing of Jesus Christ. Not that doctors and medication don't work. Don't get me wrong. Amen. But we don't want that in that priority. What the enemy does is take things out of divine order. Because God will tell you to go to the doctor. He told me to go to one. I was waiting to, I, he told me, go to the hospital. Go to the hospital. No, I ain't going to the hospital. Heal me. Go to the hospital. You're going to die. No. Then he convinced my wife to convince me. Actually, they had to carry me. <laughs> they told me I only had about an hour or two to live. So I went to the hospital. But anyways, I'm here. God works in mysterious ways. Sometimes not the way you want. See, I don't like to you. I don't like to have to use the stuff of this realm of this reality. I want it all from the true reality. Amen. But unfortunately, those things we got to utilize to survive in this, like water, <laughs> food, <laughs> nutrients, things of that degree. We got to ma still maintain this body, which is attached to this reality. But one day we're shredding it. <laughs> Amen? And we're out of here. But until then, hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 13, please, in verse 5. Examine what? Yourselves. To whether you are in the faith, test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are what? Disqualified. Wow. Examine yourselves of whether you're living in the true reality of light or the reality of darkness or deception. So why do we gather together? To reset reality. A spark happens when we come together. Refreshing, rekindling, especially when we're all in one accord and worshiping. Hallelujah. Then those voices begin to diminish. They go away. They can't live in the true light of reality. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the what? Knowledge of him, not of the world who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may what? Be partakers of what? The divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, this is powerful. <laughs> in other words, true knowledge of the light produces a divine nature. <laughs> Only to those who are living in the true reality. You can't produce the divine nature of God living out of this reality, out of the, into a dark reality of darkness. Only the reality of light. That's why so many people have fallen away from going, they're not even fellowshipping anymore. They've been taken captive in a wrong reality. And they're believers and they're sweet people. And they may even read their Bible. They refuse to assemble. Why? Because they've been taken captive. Amen? And, and what happens is things get worse the longer they take to reset that reality. Amen? They get worse because they get taken more and more and more and more and more. 
And many times they get sucked into the area, well, I need to make more money. Why? Because they're looking for a false fulfillment. Amen. I need to do this. I need to. They try to busy themselves instead of getting that reality reset. Because when the reality is reset, there's a fulfillment. It's like, wow. You, there isn't anything you need. You got it. <laughs> Him. <laughs> All glory. John chapter 8, verse 43. Jesus said to him, why do you not understand my speech or my words or the things I say? Because you're not able to abide or to listen to my words. In other words, you can't get it because I speak from another reality. And he said, you are of your father the what? Devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of the sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. You know how many people out there proclaiming to be believers, but they don't read the Bible? They can't hear God's words because they're no longer of God. Well, they might have been a believer. They might have been powerful Christians at one time. They might have had a powerful ministry, but they've drifted out of the light of that reality, and they've been taken captive in the reality of darkness now and don't even know it. So now they're living their life according to good and evil. Not according to righteousness. Because you cannot produce righteousness without the divine nature. It's impossible. And people want to associate with them. The Bible tells us not to. They're to associate with us. We're not to associate with them. Does everybody get that? In other words, we're to bring them into the light. We're not to step into the darkness. And these are voices of the false realities that draw many away through the emotional desire. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and lust of self, pride, arrogance. You know, I, I really believe that when we go home, we stand before the Lord that one of the first things that's going to probably hit us is everything we missed. It's going to be very painful before he loves us to death. But I, I really believe that that's going to be one of the things that's going to hit us the most is the painfulness of everything that we've missed. Because I know in my visitation from the Lord, the first thing that happened to me was pain. Very, very painful. And it's not an outer pain, physical pain. It's an inner emotional pain. And I really believe all the things that we were rebellious from, all the things that we did. And he, he's forgiven us. But I, I really believe that, that, that you know, that's one of going to be the first thing that's going to hit us before he loves us. We're going to sense that pain of everything that we missed in that life that he's given us. And then it will go away. And then he'll love us to death. Just like a dad who loves his children. Amen. Hallelujah. Acts 9, verse 17, please. Now we know that this was Paul who became Saul. And he now Paul lived another reality, man. I mean, he was he, he was selfish, self-righteousness. <laughs> Amen. He thought he had it all. He thought it was serving God. And so the Lord had to slam him off his horse. And then and and in verse 17, and Ananias went his way and entered the house and laying his hands on Saul, who was Paul. He said to him, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. In other words, so that you might see the true reality. 
God had to actually stop you, personally stop you from the way you were living in that reality. He did that to me. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. Saul became born again. Changed his name to Paul. You know why? Because he didn't want anything to do with that reality anymore. Even though he was living in this reality, but inside that reality of old past was gone. Gone. Amen. Paul, living in a religious reality, was fighting against the light, believing he was working for God. Many still are not baptized in the Holy Spirit, having no power to escape through obedience. Because without power, you can't, uh, you can't uh, uh, obey. Amen. And what's happening? They're preventing, the enemy's preventing people from corporate worship, from getting in God's presence, for resetting reality. James 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is what? Drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Well, that means there's another voice speaking to him. Then when, his, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth what? Brings forth that. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Hallelujah. People are drawn away through emotional desire into a false reality. They're willing to compromise the true reality of God Almighty and His light and love. Matthew 24, and verse 3. As Jesus said on Mount of Olives, and the disciples came to Him privately, saying, Tell us when all these things will be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age. Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed, no one does what? Deceive you and put you into a false reality. For many will come in my name and say that I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. And these are what we call the beginning of sours or the beginning of birth pains. Why? Because something is about to birth into a whole new era. This is where we're at right now. That's why there's going to be things that are happening in your life that you ain't going to figure out. You just don't understand why it's happening. Yet it's not anything you've done right or done wrong. This is birthing right now. There is a birth pain getting ready. The whole body of Christ is pregnant. And about to release and give birth to a whole new era. Remember, you and I are the carriers of the eternal kingdom of God. It's going to come through the body. Everything comes through the body of Christ. So we must be careful not to allow things to distract us deceive us take us out of position but we are in the time of birth pangs within there's a groaning within us we all know something's about to happen <laughs> amen no one said it would be easy in fact it says it's difficult and it says you'll hear rumors, wars and rumors of wars and so forth. And we have it. Everything that's going on, birth pains, is a new era of reality. It's a new era of reality of in creation. It's about to give birth. And the reality of darkness is being exposed more and more and more and diminishing. The fight is within. It's very trying. Things that are happening that just don't make sense. <laughs> Evil is releasing all weapons of emotional desire to oppress and mislead 
mislead those of the light. I mean, everything is being released of the enemy that he can. Everything. Oh, there are so many traps that are set up for people, it's incredible. So take heed. Amen? Be careful. I mean, things just happen out of nothing. It's like, what the heck? How can I sprain my toe? I haven't even got out of bed yet, you know? <laughs> I mean, just some of the stupidest things that are just happening. Forgetting something, dropping, I mean, just crazy. Because there's so much attacking everywhere. There's so much, it's like radio waves that are attacking everybody. The voices of the enemy. They're releasing every kind of weapon possible to prevent this new birth of the new era and new reality. Glory. John 16, verse 20. Most assuredly, I say to you that, is everybody there? Okay. You will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice, and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because of her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for the joy that a human being has been born into the world. Let me tell you. We're going to burn through all of this, and we're going to forget it after, as soon as we hit that, poof, that new release. And it's common. Hallelujah. Philippians. We can't allow the enemy to abort this birthing. Philippians 2, verse 1. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Now listen, that isn't going to happen unless we constantly get reset. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for your, his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Like-minded by resetting reality of light and with associations and believers, even your personal time in prayer, worship, corporate worship, be accountable to one another. Amen? Second Peter 3.10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in the holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. Does everybody get this? I mean, this is from Peter who's releasing this prophetic word saying, look, you're going to go through birth pangs until this new era is birthed. And then there'll be more. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. And consider that the long sufferings of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also in all of his epistles, speaking in them of the things in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You, therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with an error of the wicked into another reality. But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever and ever and ever. You know, Paul did something very powerful. He knew how to access other people's realities. The Bible says that he became many things that he might save them. So he knew how to access their realities. And then bring them out of their reality into the light. And this is what God is trying to do with us. 
But it's got to be done in, in God's way, not our way. Amen? Revelation 2, verse 18. And to the angel of the church, Thyatira, write, These things says the God, the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. Now, I want you to know this also not rep this represents a specific woman at that time, but it also represents the spirit of Babylon. I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed. And those who committed adultery with her into that great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now to you I say, and to the rest in Thyatira, as many as that do not know, have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, Say, they, as they say, I will put on you no other burden, but hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. Now, this is powerful. Because what he's saying is that Babylon is falling and being removed because Babylon is the main focus of maintaining living in the Babylonian system. It's a false reality. It's controlled by deception and fear. We've been used as slaves in the area of just believing that good and evil, never in understanding the arena of the reality of righteousness. And many don't know the depths of Satan, and that's why God is doing all of these things to expose. But the birth is going to come. And many will come into the kingdom and go through the same things that we're coming through. Now we're going to close at 2 Timothy 2. In verse 20, please. You know, the desire is the heart is the core of all desire. What's your desire? That will tell you what reality you're in or where you're going. Amen? It says, in the great house there are what? Not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some for honor and some for what? Dishonor. How many of y'all want to be a vessel of honor? Praise God. Hallelujah. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Now listen, that means cleanse himself from the false reality. Even though we're living in this reality, which is real, the Bible says we, are, we may live here, but we're not of the world. Amen. It says, verse 22, flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness. Didn't say pursue good and evil. Because that's a different reality. Faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? A pure heart. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach and patient. And humility. Correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. And that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil. Having been taken captive by the devil to do his will. Remember we're called to battle. Amen. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue. But you can't do that. If you're still living in the false reality. Why? Because the divine nature is only established when you're living in the true reality. Amen? Praise God. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you.
for your word today. And obviously, you're preparing us and warning us to check our reality because the things about the, about the great things that are about to happen. And we thank you, Lord. Help us that we may cooperate with this birthing process and bring those things that are not as though they are into this realm from your eternal purpose and counsel. Lord, seal these words today because they're your words in Jesus' name. Everybody say that.